The viral TikTok feta pasta ain't got nothing on this Southern pimento cheese version. If you haven't seen the feta pasta trend, where have you been? It's basically a block of feta baked with tomatoes, garlic, and olive oil in a baking dish until the cheese is hot and melty. You stir in cooked pasta and immediately have a cheesy, delicious one-pot pasta dish. This is the same thing, but instead of feta, I use pimento cheese. Slice cherry tomatoes in half, mince some garlic, and add in one seven ounce jar of drained diced pimentos. Spread one 16 ounce container of your favorite pimento cheese in the center of the baking dish and bake at 350 degrees for about 20 to 30 minutes or until the cheese is golden and super hot. Meanwhile, boil medium pasta shells until al dente. Stir the pasta into the hot pimento cheese and serve. This southern version of the viral trend might just be better than the original, and so easy you'll regret not making it. Y'all all know the tortilla trend. Well, these three southern variations are ones you have to try. The tortilla trend has taken over the internet. For this particular version, cut the tortilla as normal, then add in a slice of cheddar, pulled pork and barbecue sauce, sliced fried chicken, and then to really take it over the top, mac and cheese. I love extra crunchy things, so I sprinkled on some fried onions, then folded the tortilla like so. Secure the open ends with clothespins to make sure none of the filling falls out because what I'm about to do will blow your mind. We're Southern Living, so pop it into some oil and deep fry until it's golden and crisp. It should take about three to four minutes to get it done on both sides. Remove the clothespins. You won't be able to use those for laundry anymore, but you can definitely reuse for frying. Cut the tortilla in half and admire the beauty of your masterpiece. I'm telling y'all, this is one of my favorite things I have ever made. Elvis was known for loving a peanut butter, banana, and bacon sandwich, so of course I had to try it in a tortilla. For the next filling idea, the king of rock and roll was my inspiration. Spread peanut butter onto a quarter of the tortilla, then add in sliced banana and cooked bacon. Some versions of Elvis's sandwich have honey, so I added it to mine. I love the sweet and savory combo of the honey and the bacon. Fold the tortilla, then cook it in a skillet with melted butter until golden on both sides. You can also cook it in a panini press. Cut it in half and enjoy. As Elvis would say, thank you. Thank you very much. The last variation is a campfire classic. I have a gas stove, so I roasted some marshmallows over the open flame, but you could also do it over a candle. Add those to the tortilla with some milk chocolate bars, then spread marshmallow cream on the next two sides. This helps the graham crackers stick to the tortilla, and adding the ingredients in this order ensures that when you fold it, the graham crackers will be on the outside layers, just like in a regular s'more. Cook this one like the Elvis version in a skillet or panini press, then cut in half to reveal all the melted chocolatey goodness. All of these were so good, but I am still dreaming about that deep fried one. Stop slicing your okra to fry it. Instead, smash it. Mix three parts plain cornmeal to one part all-purpose flour. Season with your favorite blends. Smash whole okra pods with a mallet or a hammer, then soak in seasoned buttermilk. Batter and fry at 375 degrees until golden and crisp. You'll never go back to sliced okra again. For these smashed Brussels sprouts, boil them until they're tender enough to smash. Line a sheet tray with aluminum foil and place it in the oven. When the Brussels are cool enough to handle, smash them with a the mallet, drizzle with olive oil, and sprinkle with salt. Then give it a good toss. Bake them at 425 for about 45 minutes or until they're super crisp and well browned. Preheating the pan is essential because listen to this sizzle. In the meantime, make your sauce by heating a quarter cup of honey in a small saucepan until thick. Then add in a half teaspoon of red pepper flakes, a quarter cup of apple cider vinegar, three tablespoons of butter, and a quarter teaspoon of salt. Bring it to a simmer and cook until thick. Honestly, smashing any vegetable is the key to maximum crispness and flavor. Pour the sauce over the crispy brussels and toss it in a bowl, then place on a serving platter. Boil the potatoes until they're tender and smash with a mallet. Then add bacon drippings or olive oil to a cast iron skillet. Place the potatoes in the hot grease, then sprinkle with salt. Flip them after they're golden on the first side and season with salt again. Cook until crispy and golden and then try not to eat the whole batch. 